Hey everybody, Robert Kennedy III here, RK3, that's me. I work with leaders who need to deliver critical messages and present their ideas with confidence. One of the questions that I've been getting a lot lately is, hey Robert, when you live stream to LinkedIn, Facebook, Periscope, wherever, what applications, what software are you using? In this video, I want to share and go through one application that I use as I live stream to a lot of the different platforms, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. Let's go. If you're live streaming, you have a plethora of software that you can use. I won't go through and name all of them, but there are a lot of different options. And you've got to decide what is it that's most important to you. Do you want to be able to multi-stream to different platforms? Do you want to be able to interview people? Do you want to be able to overlay graphics, lower thirds, add add video, screen share? All of these things are questions that you've got to ask. One of the pieces of software, one of the applications that I absolutely love as I've begun to use it is StreamYard. And you go to StreamYard.com. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to go down to the pricing so you can kind of see how StreamYard works. They're fairly straightforward. If you sign up for any of these options, of course, there's the monthly and the annual plan. Let me go to monthly since most people aren't going to do annual. I do annual a lot because it really saves me quite a few bucks when I do these. But if you start with the free plan, you can see that it allows you screen sharing. It allows you to do banners. It allows you to see on screen comments. It allows you to have up to six on screen participants. You can have your own brand colors, green screen, green screen, stream anywhere. And the StreamYard branding though is in your streams. And then you have some limits like up to 20 hours per month on the free plan. If you hop up to the basic plan, you'll see that you have everything that's in free. Plus you can take out the StreamYard branding from your streams. You can stream as much as you want. You can add your own logo. You can add overlays. You can add backgrounds. You can customize the destinations. Uh, and you can record up to four hours continuous stream and that'll be stored and you can multi-stream up to two destinations, which means you can multi-stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. If you want, if you hop up to the professional plan, you can do Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Periscope, you know, anywhere else that you want to stream up to, at the same time. Oh, and if you wanted to shoot to face to stream to let's say a Facebook group, your Facebook page, your Facebook profile all at the same time, this allows you to do that if you use that plan. Okay, so let's go back up to the actually, I'm not going to go back up. I'm just going to go up to here where it says login. Here's one of the things that I love with StreamYard and their login process. When you click login, it asks you for the email that you use to log in and then they will send you a login code. So I'm going to put my email in. I'm, I'm going to pause so you don't see that. All right. So it. I put my email in and then it asks me for, it sends me a six digit code. I'll put the code there. Then I'll just click login and it brings me right into my StreamYard dashboard. Now here are a few different things that you can do here. You've got it. If you click on destinations, you can add the different destinations that you want to send to. So for example, I've got my profile, I've got my page, I've got my group storytellers growth lab. I've got some other Facebook groups, my LinkedIn profile. I've got connected there, my YouTube channel and my Periscope channel. If I click on add destination, you can see here all of the different places. I can add Twitch if I'm a gamer and I wanted to use that as one of the destinations that I wanted to send it to. Okay, so you can go ahead and add to an event, a profile on LinkedIn, page, group profile on Facebook as well. And if you have a custom destination that you wanna send to, you can do that from here, okay? So my destinations are set. And I'm gonna go back over to broadcasts here. Now, if I want to create a broadcast, here's what I do. I click on create a broadcast and all of my destinations are kind of grayed out here. But let's say that I've got a group here that I want to broadcast to. And I'm going to do that just because it's, it's a small test group and I know nobody's there. So I'm going to choose that and I'm going to put a title in and I'm going to say test broadcast 
there. Test broadcast. There. Uh, add comment instructions to my post. Now, here's what happens. If you are on Facebook, Facebook needs permission for you to be able to, for them to show your comments in the post or for you to be able to show your viewers comments. So people will need to get that instruction inside of Facebook groups. So it's gonna add that instruction to the post. And I believe the same thing is on LinkedIn also. I can schedule for later or I can create the broadcast now. If I schedule it for later, you'll see what happens. It allows me to upload a thumbnail image and I can schedule for a specific time and and that that's actually pretty cool so it gives people a heads up that you're going to go live at a specific time okay i'm going to unschedule that and i'm going to create a broadcast it brings me to this broadcast area you can see that my microphone icon is working there i can put my display name in i can change the camera and the microphone that i want to use so in my case i've got several cameras set up here and let me go to the which one do i want to go let's let's just go to this one okay so you can where am i boom oh there you go all right good so you can kind of see a little bit of behind the scenes here my setup <laughs> okay i can also choose the camera resolution 20 uh 720p 480p or low definition 360. I'm going to leave it at 720 because we are a high definition society. I get to choose my audio, whatever mic and speaker I want. I can disable audio processing and uh, that really you only want to use that if you have echo or noise cancellation podcasters, we, we might use that. All right. And if I wanted to add green screen, I could do that as well. Okay. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and click on enter broadcast studio when i come into the broadcast studio you're going to see that you won't see anything in the stream just yet because i'm down here okay down bottom left and when i click add to stream you will now see me inside the stream now i'm not going to do anything there are some buttons across the bottom here and i won't do anything with them just yet until i add somebody else to the stream but what i want to do is i want to go over to the top right here and if people are on your stream and they're making comments, this is where you can see them show up and you can you can respond to some of them in here, depending on what the platform is. I'm going to click on banners and here you can see some of the different banners that I've used in the past. So, for example, I'm going to put. I'm going to show a, a, a banner here. My name is a banner, but there are also other banners and some banners you can show up as tickers like this sliding across the bottom of the screen. And here's how you create that quickly. If I go down to the bottom, I'll see an option here that says create banner. I'll type a message in here and I'll just kind of call this testing stream yard. Okay. So I see that. There's that banner and then I'm going to create another one and it says StreamYard is awesome. But before I get out of that, I'm going to choose the check mark that says scroll across bottom. And when you see that, okay, so you'll see that and you can put anything here, a website, a link that you want people to to see and click on or copy and direct them to at some point. This is great for that. OK, and I'm going to go up to the right hand side here again. I'm going to choose brand and this is really great for using brand colors. My brand colors are blue and orange in case you haven't figured that out yet. And right. So you can choose you can choose your brand color if you want a, a, a color and underneath that you can choose theme and theme really show deals with how the banners show up at the bottom. So, for example, I can use the default banner, which goes all the way across the screen and is a little bit larger, or I can use the minimal, which, you know, it depends on what your brand is. Okay. And I'm not going to go through all of these. You can add a logo in, you can add overlays. For example, I, I created some overlays in Canva just to have some different information on screen when I, when I want to. Okay. And I can, and it's pretty easy to do that. It, if you look 
in, at this question mark, it shows you the size. It's got to be 1280 by 720, and you can just bring it in by clicking the Add button and uploading that. Okay. Now, there is a background. You can add a background, and this doesn't make sense to you right now until a little bit later on. I'll come back and show you what that does. And then, of course, you can turn the display names on and off. And oh, let me turn this banner off so that you can see. So I've got my display name there. And if I choose to turn my display names off, I can do that. Okay. I can do a private chat if I want to chat with guests. Uh, and so the the audience doesn't see that and then I can I've got in my settings it's the same stuff that I showed you before the camera audio green screen and guest information if I want to deal with that finally I've got my go live button at the top right and that'll send me live in whatever group I am in at that point so here's what I want to do I want to add a guest to to this right now so that you can see how that works. And here we go. I'm going to add a fabulous guest. You guys are going to be shocked by who this person is. Hold on one second. They're coming in. And here's how I do that. If I go down to the bottom of my studio area here, there's an invite button. And if I click on that, I will see a unique link here and I can copy that to the clipboard. I can send it through messenger. I can email or I can just copy it and text it to him, whatever the case is. This is how I can add a guest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to send this to my guest so that I can add a guest to the stream. All right. So my guest is in on the bottom left here and I'm going to click add to stream and my guest will be in the stream magically. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the buttons at the bottom here so you can kind of see how the differences are. If I click here, this really gets me I can kind of see the background. So let me actually go over back to the brand for a moment so you can see how this works. If I slide down to the bottom, I now see that there is a graphic that appears behind me. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the next option here and I become larger. And this is one of the things I want you to pay attention to here is that your guests, if they are in on their phones and they're in portrait mode, this is how it's gonna look on stream on screen. You wanna get them to be in landscape mode if possible so you don't get the black bars on the side. OK, so I'm going to click this and I click this fifth icon here. But you notice that nothing happens because really what's supposed to happen here is if I'm sharing my screen. So I'm going to share my screen for a second quickly and I'm going to go down to the bottom toolbar area here and I'm going to click share screen and this little message pops up screen sharing is equal easiest with two monitors um, you can see that i can share either my entire screen i can share an application window or i can share a chrome tab again that's a hint you really want to be using chrome if you're using Streamyard. okay so i'm going to share my entire screen too okay so now you can see my screen is being shared there and then I can move my presenters from the side by clicking this last icon and that allows the screen share to take up the entire screen. Okay, so I can move back and forth between these if I want. Are you seeing that now? Cool. All right. So I'm going to stop my screen share. and go back to my regular screen here. Okay, so that's pretty much how StreamYard works. That's pretty much how it works. You can add messages to the screen if people are watching. Let me actually go live so you can see this. All right, I'm gonna go up to the top here, top right, and I'm gonna click go live, and it's gonna go live in that group that I set it to go live in already. Okay, so it's live in that group. Okay, so I've 
gone live in the group and I'm, I've joined my own live <laughs> here at the group and I'm going to go over to the comments area. I just typed a comment in and there's a comment here. If you look over on the right, you can see it. But then when I click show, you see that it pops up on the actual live stream. All right. So let me actually go back to brand for a second and I want to change it from the theme from minimal to default. And you see what that does to the comment. You can kind of you can see the name, you can see the comment, you can see the profile of the person, the profile picture. And that's actually a pretty cool feature. I love that. So that is that's StreamYard in a nutshell. When I'm done with the broadcast, I'll just click on end broadcast. Ask me how it went. I'll say that it went well, not now. And then I'll still be in the room here. So if I have a guest, I can actually continue talking to the guest in the room after the broadcast has been ended. OK, that just means it's not going live anymore, but I can still talk to the guest in the room. OK, when I'm done with that, I'll just click return to dashboard and that'll bring me back out to this dashboard area and I can go over to past broadcasts and I'll see the broadcast that I did just recently. If I click on these uh, these dots, it'll allow me to enter the broadcast studio again. I can download the recording of that or I can view it on Facebook. If I click on that, it'll take me right to the page where the broadcast was taking place. OK, so I'm going to close that out and get back in here. And that is StreamYard in a nutshell. I said that already. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I hope that was helpful to you. And if you wanna sign up for StreamYard, you can do that. I'll leave a link in the comments or in the description so that you can sign up for your own StreamYard account and begin to live stream immediately. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing some other tips, tricks, and techniques about storytelling, the techniques and the technologies of storytelling. I'll be sharing that soon and look out for reviews on some of the other streaming platforms like Restream, like BeLive, and I won't name all of them now because I don't know all of them. Yeah, anyway, come back for another video soon. I'll see you.